back into the horror. So I just went over to my asset store real quick and searched up footsteps and free assets. I'm just going to grab classical footsteps. Don't know if it's any good, but let's give it a whirl. Come on. There we go. So, like I said, to me, like, a horror, the horror genre, um, there's certain elements that really need to come into play. Uh, sound and lighting is obviously one. Uh, the other thing is movement uh, of, of things, right? Like, if we come into this room, when we come into this room, wouldn't it be kind of cool if, like, a shadowy figure was, say, down here and bolted through this door just fast enough that you can see it but not f slow enough that you can really tell what it is right you just have that bit of suspense so <clears throat> I think the other thing we should probably make right off the bat is a canvas I'm just going to rename it for my own purposes overlay scale with screen size um, here we're going to put in a, uh, I could put in an image. I don't know if I have any images. I'm just going to put in a text. I'm going to scale it down, keep it right in the center. Go to my 2D world. So it's sitting right in the center. We're going to want to probably make this white you can of course change the font and everything as, as you see fit and I'm gonna make it just slightly bigger and then I am going to deactivate it simple as that and what I want to do is I'm gonna put an FSM on this HUD and this is going to be kind of an interactional thing, right? So, okay, we need triggers, right? Like, for example, we have our tags, door. And if I can now come out of here, go back towards the player. So doors, if I select the door so we get all the doors, I don't know how many doors we have, but we'll select those. Give those a door. Now they already have colliders on them. Uh, there's still lots we need to do to doors to even open them, but if they're now tagged with door, and if we want, we can we can do a layer system as well. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have I'm going to bring in this variable. And that was trade door. Okay, so I am going to. Oh, the other thing I want is to bring in the player camera holder as a variable. And I can now raycast. Actually, it, it, it's better. Like you, like you can do raycasts, and raycasts are great for a lot of things. Um, raycasts are extremely pinpoint accurate to the point where if you move that mouse just slightly off of it, it's gone. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make more or less a a fat raycast, and that's called sphere cast, which apparently we do not have. And I don't have eco. Don't mind all my different projects opened up. I'm just going to grab Eco and drag it in. And expand him and import. So sphere casting, is, like I said, it's just like a ray cast, but you can put a bit of width to it. And uh, it, it makes it... it, it it makes moving around and interacting with objects a lot less frustrating. If you use a raycast, um, to me, if it, it's it gets it gets really annoying when you have smaller objects. It's fine on the bigger objects, but 
so sphere cast sphere cast uh, there's a unity four one let's see yeah, well, that's all we need so it's compiling and we'll close and we'll open and now we can sphere cast So we want to sphere cast from the camera holder in a radius. Well, we don't need a huge radius, but let's go, I don't know, say 0.25 in the 1z self and say 2.5. Um, we, for now, we don't want to hit the player layer. Well, we don't ever want to hit the player layer. So if we hit something, we don't care what we actually hit, but, well, no, that's not true. We do care. Let's store hit object because, oh, there's a no hit event either. Okay, no hit. I don't know if Raycast or the Spherecast does the every frame. Uh, not that you already want to do a whole bunch of Raycast every frame all over the place. So if we hit something, we want to say tag compare. You almost better off doing a switch actually, because it's not. If, if you only got one or two things, tag compare is fine. So let's get tag. of the what? oh a store hit is a bool I don't care about bools um, kind of sworn spearcast has get ray Hit, hit object, and get tag of the hit object. Store result as hit object tag. And should need to test that real quick. I want to do a finish, but we don't want to just do it in the same frame, or else that's an infinite loop. So I'll we'll just do a next frame event. I'm just going to pop that up. So, oh yeah. So, we also need a if we didn't hit. We need to know what happens. It's going to go like super lightning fast. Oh yeah, we got those footprints too. Uh, that stuff, I should put those in. Right, so we're hitting the door. We get the tag, it's the door. Okay, so that's that, that works fine. Actually, since I'm at it, I'm going to change those footsteps now because if I don't right now, I'm going to probably forget about it. So for now, I'm just going to put in a generic footstep. I'm sure. And let's bring that volume down a little more. See how that sounds. Should be a little better. Oh yeah. Now, here, here's 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 actually a little quick uh, uh, way to, to really add a little bit of depth into some sound 
is we're going to random float. Uh, actually, we can use even two of these if we really want to get fancy. And we can say from point 0.3 to point 0.4, and that's volume. And we can do, say, point 0.95 to 1.05, and that's pitch. Put that below this, and then we want to set audio pitch. Put that below those, but above the audio play to pitch. Set audio volume. Bring that down and change that to volume. Now, when we walk, it's not just the same clip over and over and over and over. Well, it is. But there is a little bit of variation to it. Right. And then the other thing you also could do if you really also want to push that even farther is array get random. Push that up to the top and make a array of audio clips. Uh, I'll even just say four. And I'm going to put that over here. And I'm going to go select that guy. And let's go Grab some of these just kind of randomly like that. I mean, you can definitely use them all. So we're going to get from steps, store, use this step, audio play, use this step. Now, when you walk, <coughs> you get a much more variety of, of sounding. Sounds a lot better. And like I said, like later on I'll you know we'll we'll do a physics material based sound system or something and you can change the sounds on wood or grass and things like that. Okay. So we're going to take this next frame out and we're going to put in a weight and just wait, I don't know, ah, 0.3 seconds. Just because we really don't need it every, every frame to run in there. So we are going to get that. So if we hit, we want to activate. Well, actually, we don't want to do that quite yet, but we're going to put it up here anyways. So the text, so we're going to move this and put it over here. We're going to deactivate the text. But over there, we have that, and then we can do a string, string switch. And that will be string variable is the tag. Right now we only got the one and if the tag is door then we can send event at door get rid of that and at door okay now <clears throat> we're, we're obviously going to be adding on to this. There's going to be a whole pile of things. If we hit something and it's Actually, let's put that next frame back in here. Make sure it's at the bottom. And if we hit nothing that we recognize that fits into the switch, then we'll go over here. But if we do hit something and we recognize it, we want to then activate, and I'm just going to copy this one over that but we want to activate it and we want to set text set text
text. You can also bring an image in if you would like, put a little hand on the screen or something. So of the text. And what do we want to say if we're looking at a door? How about I'll use door or activate or open. All right, and then we can finish that and go back over here. All right, so now if I hit play. lose my head if it wasn't attached let's go back over this way now let's we're going to need a bit of a weight into that and then we can go that way so let's put a little weight here copy and paste now with the way I had it I just had it <coughs> it was more or less activating and deactivating pretty much at the same time where now we hit something it says use door Away, it's gone. Alright, so now we can use the door. So we have that. Um, uh, let's call this interaction text. Sure. The other thing we might want is, for example, we might want a empty game object and we can give this thing say for example a name like flashlight give it a light make it a spot turn this stuff on so we're going to want you know, maybe a little range to this thing, maybe not. Shrink the angle down so it's more spooky. Just going to give it just that little hint. Yellow. And why do we not see any colors? So let's go shadows, we want shadows, and let's just pause that for a minute, well, you know what, that's probably because he is sun here um, this is also really good if we can get our hands on I believe I've seen some free volumetric lighting at uh, on the github I should probably bring that in so we can turn this into a volumetric lighting I'm just going to adjust this a little bit and let's bring this out to 25 maybe Okay, let's bring this down to a more reasonable amount. Yeah, let's go 13. Let's give it nice strong shadows. that. Should have almost copied the transform instead. Ah, so I changed them both. So let's paste those. I'm going to redo the transform a bit. I'm just going to move that out. Okay, now we hit play. Definitely need to darken that up. 
So let's go. Let's cut it in half. What's that? That's not bad, and it's still bright. Take it down to five. It's a little bright and we're close. It's okay when we're far. So what if we go maybe five, but bring this down to four? said they did put in lights into this demo so I'm just gonna look for those lighthouse lighthouse point lights and I'm gonna just delete all those if we want some lighting we'll <coughs> we'll put it in ourselves probably better better that way anyways I put a flashlight system in with batteries or something we can interact with to get batteries. So I'm going to lighting. I'm going to gradient color. No, let's do gra gradient. way too much. I mean, it's, yeah. Let's, uh, we don't really want to go pure black. It makes the things look ugly. Ah, so, I don't know, that's fine. Now let's go five. Six, six, six. Bring that down. All right. And sun source is this guy. He's fine. All right. Yeah. Well. Yeah, but then we don't have reflections. We want reflections. <coughs> we'll have to play with that, I guess, because we have this guy here. Well, I, well, we can always do our own reflections later on. But that definitely looks a lot darker. bring his light down a little more and I, what if we do uh, what if 
could go the other way. Go 25 and go up in the light. So, light. Let's go. Max, if we go one. Yeah. Right now, granted, we can go something like two and take this up to like 800. to have some crazy number in there <clears throat> okay so if we want we can now have well let's let's just put our FSM right on this guy and we'll call him flashlight and we can put a Lighter, and we will get rid of the handle and we can use for the fill I don't know, we'll say kind of an orangey and the background kind of a dark orangey I think maybe with a slider we should go bottom to top let's go into our 2d world Bring that over here. Anchor it on our side. Now let's zero out these things. Okay. And let's stretch them out, make them a little heavier that way. So there we go. And that is our flashlight battery. We could uh, we'll probably use floats. Let's give it a higher max value for now. So, flashlight. The flashlight's going to need a reference to the flashlight battery. So, if we get button get key down oh man what key should we use how about F F for flashlight right, where is where's F F so we've hit flashlight Hit the flashlight. We need to get mm, let's do this. Let's bring the actual grab the actual light component and just drag it in. And I won't bother getting component because we're not going to get any other components, it'll just be that one. So get prop. Property is on the flashlight. The property we want is enabled. And then pool test.
So if we are, <coughs> this is on, is off. Is on, is off. So if we are on, then we want to set property. You also might want to put in like a light switch sound or something here. Enabled to off. And we're going to set bool, a new bool that we don't have. Actually, no. Yes. Um, flashlight on. <coughs> and we're going to use that for the battery drainage. And then we're going to finish that. And we're just going to head back there. And if we are over here, but we have one more thing to check before we come into here if we're going to go on, is get slider value. So our slider flashlight battery battery value and float to compare so if battery value is equal it is dead if it's less it's dead greater is good. It is dead is good. If it's good, then we can do that. If it's dead, we're just going to go back. So there we go. <coughs> now if we start with that disabled. Now I hit my F, I get it on, my F, I get it off. The other thing we want to add in is battery life. So get FSM bool. We could also just do this with events coming from that one as well, but this this will work. So flashlight is on. Oh, we should also make sure. So flashlight is on, flashlight is off. Okay, yeah, we did. So get flashlight is on. Is on. Every frame. Bool test. So is on, is true, yes. Copy, paste. We're going to come over here, and this guy is going to be, no. Simple as that. So <clears throat> if it's on, we're going to sit in this state. If it's off, we're going to sit in this state. So if it's on, we want to slowly... Now we could do this every frame or we could do it um, <coughs> kind of based on, a, on like a repeating event. Uh, obviously the repeating event would be a lot better performance wise but this should be okay. So this is the actual battery life. add say negative 0.1 every frame per second UI slider set value we also need to get value in here so we need to 
get the value. Oh, we don't even have it down here. We put it in the other FSM. Of that guy. We can store it in there. We can add or subtract that and we can set it back into that. That should work. Alright, so let's see. Where is it? Make sure he's doing something. but not the right thing. Oh, whoops. Okay, so there we have it. It's dropping very, 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 very slowly. So what if we took this to five times faster? way too fast. Well, I guess really. Uh, the negative point one kind of works. Again, you, you can play with that and adjust it. <coughs> so I think the other thing we should probably put on here is Let's, let's activate it. We don't always see it. Let's activate flashlight battery. That is the right thing we're looking at. Yes, it is. So here we activate it. Copy. And here we deactivate it. So it should make it start deactivating. Turn it on, it comes on with us. We get this flashlight. We have our new door, which we gotta set that up. We have this flashlight. We look around, and the flashlight is slowly dropping on power. thing we're going to need on battery life is a float compare and if battery life is equal to zero it has died every frame or if it's less it has died especially when we're dealing with floats just don't go with zero if it's greater we're not going to do anything and if it has died, then we need to tell this guy that we have died. And we just need to go into here. So let's just make an event called dead. Stick it right there. And he'll just turn that off and come back into here. Right. So if we come here, we're going to send event to our owner, to the flashlight, that it has dead. Next frame, control click, and finish, and let's, let's go over here, because that's where we're going to be. And if it fixes itself, it'll just pop over automatically. So, like I said, this thing needs to start deactivated because the flashlight's deactivated. Let's bring this way down. hit F, 
Okay, that's all I want right now. Sliding F, a million times, nothing is happening. Okay. But if I was to increase this, say we picked up a battery, I can hit F and it works. So there's our we'll see what we're doing for time. 40 minutes. Is there anything else we can add to that real quick or should we call it there? Um, let's get out of the 2D world. So <coughs> maybe we will we'll, we'll do something here a little different just to end this video off. I'm going to take a chair like this. I'm going to come over here, take that chair, pop it out, stick it here, I'm going to unprefab it. We got just big old box colliders on them. Eh? Let's go to our stuff and I'm going to prefab it there, but first. I'm going to create an empty and I'm going to stick it there and put the chair inside the empty. And this is going to be the falling chair. Give that a animator and our stuff. Let's make a little folder called falling chair. And create the animator in there. Chair. He gets that. And let's make a quick animation. All right, so we have create idle, record, and we are going to not touch, don't, don't, don't ever touch this, this top one, <coughs> or else you'll walk in his world positions is why I put everything into a game object right so we're going to just deal with just with this guy's locals right so let's just move them so it walks in I'm going to zero these out so we're not actually moving it go over here and key them in and then say at well we'll say at this stage we want this chair to be on the ground. Right, we're going to just alter him a bit. And obviously move him this way. Bring him up. And adjust a little bit. So he's going to sit there. So the other thing, obviously that kind of fall is weird. So at, say at this stage, oh, can we copy those? Does it let us do that? All right, so at this stage, we still want to be at zeros for now. And instead we want to be tipping Right, so now we have this tipping. We'll move a fall. All right, so at this stage, we don't want these to be moved yet. All right, so there's a. Okay. And once we hit here, maybe we'll just add a little touch of a slide. Okay, so nice and fast. Might be too fast, but it might not be. Okay. So I'm not going to bother doing any other animations for that guy, but what we'll do is the way we'll set that up now is we're actually going to make an empty, and he's going to be the default state. 
make a transition. We don't want this thing to be looping. Make sure to turn that off. This has no exit time. Duration can be zero. We need to trigger though. Fall. Fall. Okay. So now what we need is a FSM and hmm, how should we do this? Let's do is visible. Get main camera. Store him as cam. Camera is going to be cam. And if true is visible. Now, with that said, this doesn't check <coughs> for walls and stuff. So get distance. Cam. So if we are visible, we are going to float compare distance, and if we are within five, if we are less than that, fall. We are greater than that. Don't. And if we don't, we just want to go back and put a small weight. Half a second. And if we're fall, we might want to we we might add a ray cast just to make sure like we're actually like physically visible to the player. <clears throat> but for now we're just going to do this set animator trigger on the owner fall all right so the other thing is i will prefab that chair so we can reuse them in places and i'll take this chair and i'm just going to stick them over here now Little things like this. There's lots of those little things that we're going to want to add. Right, let's see what this chair is thinking. This camera is visible. We should be visible now. being silly. Oh geez, yeah. If I was smart I would have stuck this on there. Alright, so let's let's open the prefab of that. Alright, so we're checking the renderer. Is the renderer visible to the player. Also could have just added force to it too I guess other than animation but we'll, there's some pretty neat things we can do with animation so. Check that again because we want to put it up so like we're at, at the door. Oh, all right. Okay, right, so <laughs> make sure to do this. Let's just give this guy a bit of a weight. 
make sure everything's loaded in the game and everything's there and everyone's got their their stuff See what this thing is thinking. All right, so he's in the weight, and then he just falls. And he should not be falling. Distance is zero. Oh, you know what? Here we did it again, right? We're getting distance. We're getting distance after the event. We don't want to do that. We want to get it before the event. sitting there and he's doing his weight because the distance right now is 37 Distance is six. That's what we're looking at. When we're talking about we want something to happen. We're still a ways away. What is this thing doing now? All right. Well, this thing's just being stupid. Now, I'm going to get rid of the whole camera idea. We're just going to do distance. And then we'll have to add a ray cast in after that as well. But for now, we're just going to. Oh, I shouldn't have deleted that. at all. I could have just, I suppose, just left it, take this part right out. But like I said, we'll, we'll, we'll add in a ray cast later on. One more time. So, it doesn't matter. Oh, you stupid thing. The distance scale. Yeah, we're not, we're just going to get rid of that now. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Get to, oh yeah, well. I guess we need that whole get. Because we need a reference to the player. Find closest. There we go. Move to the top. Player. Let's just use the player. Must be because we don't care about that right now. Store him in the cam every frame. Store him in the distance. Get rid of that. Definitely need some sound, probably expand the distance, but you get the idea now, right? Oh, there goes our battery. Right? So we're going to add a whole whack of sounds, going to add some distance, and <clears throat> probably every other kind of room, we're going to want something like that. Maybe we'll have the pitcher, you know, tilt as well, or come off, and you know, something floating over here, I don't know. 
but we also don't want it too often either or else it just kind of gets uh, like oh look there's something happening here oh there's something happening here so we want as much nothing happening as we have you know things happening so we have to we want that suspense well anyways so that's kind of part two of the first person horror we'll talk to you in the next version next part